Okay, let's move on to another test of the odlet function, SVV. The SVV characterizes the angle between the perceived and the actual vertical alignment of the head. In the static version of SVV, the head is a stationary, meaning upright or at preset angles. Static SVV can be measured with something as simple as the bucket test or with more sophisticated goggles. If you have these goggles, they allow you to measure SVV at angles other than the head upright position, and it definitely increases the sensitivity of the test. Static SVV is considered a test of the odlets and their central pathways. Normal subjects can detect vertical alignment within a few degrees, maybe around 2 to 3 degrees. The normative values increase with the head tilt angle, as you can see with the widening green areas. These are the 75% and 95% confidence limits around the mean. Patients with odolith lesions perceive an underestimation of the head tilt that increases when the head is tilted toward the side of lesion. Abnormal findings are usually severe in the acute phase of the lesion, but they improve with compensation. Central abnormalities can also result in abnormal SVV findings, but deviations from normal are usually quite, uh, quite a bit more severe, and head tilts can lead to overestimation or underestimation of the tilt. There's a relationship between the OCR test and the static SVV test. Static SVV is basically the perceptual measure of static torsion that's measured during the OCR. Both tests are assessing the same vestibular pathways, and a study from 2009 establishes that there's a correlation between them. This was also confirmed by the same study from the Hopkins group that I mentioned earlier. There are also differences between the tests because, as I mentioned before, in the OCR, the static torsion of the eyes in the head upright position is measured only after the lesion. We don't know what it was before the lesion. But the way the static SVV test is performed, it's actually designed to provide the changes in the perception of vertical before and after the lesion. It seems that by combining the results of the S OCR and the static SVV test, we might be able to identify the asymmetries during the OCR testing and be able to better to uh, identify the site of lesion in the OCR test. Another method for orlet testing is the off-axis rotation chair. In the standard rotation chair testing, the axis of rotation goes through the center of the head. The responses are typical nystagmus that you get during rotation and they're consistent with uh, semicircular canal stimulation. The contribution of odolits during on-axis rotation is minimal because the opposing forces on the right and left utricles usually cancel each other out. In the eccentric rotation, also called unilateral centrifugation, the axis of rotation is moved so that it can pass through one of the utricles. Now, rotation about this axis generates centrifugal and tangential forces that stimulate the contralateral utricle. One would assume that clockwise and counterclockwise rotations stimulate different areas of the utricle. The early part of the response during eccentric rotation is from the semicircular canals, but after prolonged rotation in constant velocity, responses from the canals subside and the utricular responses become apparent. These responses can be quantified either by measuring the torsional eye movements via OCR or with SVV. These are now dynamic OCR 
and dynamic SVV responses, and they're not the same as the static measurements that were mentioned before. The difference between the static versus dynamic measures is analogous to the spontaneous nystagmus test versus the caloric test or rotation chair test. Again, abnormal findings are severe in acute lesions but improve with compensation. Dynamic OCR and SVV during eccentric rotation provide independent assessment of the right and left utricles. So far, no significant correlation has been found between eccentric rotation results and OVAMS. That's not surprising. It indicates that there are differences in the stimuli and the neural pathways. So here's another screenshot of the software where the patient is performing dynamic SVV during eccentric rotation. First, the static SVV is measured while the chair is stationary. Then the chair is moved to an off-axis position. In this case, it's moved 4 cm to the left, which makes it a test of the right utricular function. The chair is then slowly accelerated until it reaches the final velocity of 300 degrees per second. It's going to take a few seconds to get to that velocity. Uh, the patient is in complete darkness, sitting with the head strapped. She's holding a remote button, which she uses during the SVV to align the bar that's projected on the wall. Once she reaches the uh, final velocity of 300 degrees per second, she will be rotated at this velocity for an extended period of time to ensure that the canal responses completely subside and the responses will be confined to the outlets. Then the patient performs the SVV test while the chair is rotating. What you're seeing on the screen in the graph is the uh, alignment of the bar, which the patient gradually changes until she feels that it's vertical. The test is repeated for different initial alignments of the bar and for different directions of off-axis alignment. The normative values for on-axis rotation is about 3 degrees, and for dynamic testing is about 4 to 12 degrees, um, and there's usually no asymmetry. The min asymmetry is minimal. In summary, the OCR and SVV tests provide evaluation of the otolith function. Both tests can be performed with the head stationary, that's static testing, or with the head moving during eccentric rotation, that's dynamic testing. Static and dynamic tests are not the same, and they evaluate different aspects of the otoliths. In patients with vestibular abnormalities, the test results improve with compensation. The absence of a clear correlation with VEMPS suggests that the OCR and SVV tests can provide complementary information. Specifically, VEMP findings are related to the lesion and do not reflect changes in the compensation, whereas the SVV and OCR findings can change with compensation. Thank you very much for your attention.